morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. You are once again warmly welcome to our channel, your channel, Benga Nature Farms. Today, we are going to discuss an interesting topic. The topic that you all have been talking about, trying to find out how you know if your snails are dead, because many farmers are complaining that they are losing their snails at this time. So today, we are going to talk about that topic. Please, I want you to stay right with me from the beginning of this video to the end of this video so that you get all the salient points that will be released in order for you to know whether your snails are dead or not, or maybe your snails are resting, or they are just hibernating, or they are estivating, or they even need to be energized. So stay right with me in this video from the beginning to the end. Don't miss any point in this video. Point we are going to discuss now is lack of movement. That is the very first point. Snails, although slow, usually show some signs of movement, especially when they are exposed to stimuli like food or water. If there is changes in their food or water, they are, they are likely to show signs of movement. If your snail has not moved for an extended period of time, for several days or up to a week, it could be a sign of death. We can test for movement by gently touching the snail or change its environment slightly, maybe from one pen to another. We will observe that healthy snails we obviously respond by retracting or extending their bodies, either inward or even outward at times. Number two point, foul odor, for you to know if your snails are dead. A dead snail emits a very strong and unpleasant odor, which is as a result of decomposition. This foul smell is a very clear indication that the snail is no longer alive. We can check for odor by carefully smelling the snail and its surroundings. During this process, we will perceive a very strong foul smell, which is definitely sign of death of that particular snail. Point number three. Shell condition. A live snail maintains its shell and it should appear intact and healthy. While on the other hand, a dead snail often shows signs of whitey shells or decolored shells, although not all snails with whitey shells mean that they are dead. It might mean lack of calcium for them. In our previous video, it was well stated that whitish shells for snails is an evidence that the snail lacks calcium, which, if calcium deficiency persists for a very long period in snails, it can result in their death, as they will be predisposed to a lot of external factors like waking shells, which could lead to lack of immunity, an attack by predators easily. A dead snail often shows signs of neglect, maybe due to improper feeding on our part or not intentionally feeding them with balanced meals as it should be. This was also discussed in our previous video. A dead snail may also show signs of broken or damaged shell. We can check for shell condition by looking out for decoloration of their shells, excessive agar growth, or a brittle texture on snail shell. This can indicate that the snail is no longer maintaining its shell. Number four, body condition. The snail's body provides significant clues. A live snail's body is usually firm and very moist, while a dead snail's body may be shriveled or dry. 
we can examine the body to find out if a snail is out of its shell. We want to check if the body is limp or very stiff. We want to check for dryness and decomposition of the snail's body. If all of these signs or one or two of these signs are present, it means there is a strong indicator that the snail is dead. Point number five, position in the shell. A live snail typically retracts into its shell when resting. However, if the snail is deeply retracted and fails to respond to stimuli, like for example, when you touch its surface, it will move further inwards. This shows that this snail is still alive. But if it is deeply retracted and fails to respond to stimuli, it could be that that snail is dead. However, deaths of snail could be tricky or very, very deceptive. If we do not understand snail behavior and their life cycles, before we jump into a conclusion that a snail is dead or a snail is alive. In today's video, we are going to look at the terms hibernation, estivation, and resting. I believe you are enjoying this video. If you are enjoying this video, friends, please click the like button. Click the subscribe button if you are enjoying this video. Also, click on the post notification bell so that whenever I release a new video, you'll be among the first to receive notification I just released a new video. Please watch with me to the end of this video so that you get to know what the terms estivation, what the terms hibernation, and also what the term resting means for snails and how we can also energize our snails. Let's discuss further points. Now, I want to talk about hibernation. Hibernation occurs in land snails during winter season order for them to survive the extreme or harsh cold temperature conditions. In hibernation, the snail's body temperature is lower than breathing and heart rate slows down. Hibernation protects the animal from cold and reduces the need for food during the season when food is scarce. So this term, hibernation, should normally be used to refer to snails in temperate regions, precisely Europe or certain parts of Asia and the Americas, and also here in Africa or Nigeria, precisely where our weather is cold during the rainy season. The snails can hibernate. Now, let's talk about estivation. This also occurs in hot and dry conditions, whereby some snails enter a state of estivation or sealing themselves off to conserve moisture. Estivation, which is a state of animal dormancy similar to hibernation, although it takes place mainly in hot and dry conditions in Africa, it also takes place in the summer in Europe and part of Asia and the Americas. Note that this state could at times be mistaken for death of snails. Yes, it is not the death of snails, but some people mistake it that their snails are dead. Now, let's talk about resting. We have talked about hibernation. We have talked about estivation. Resting occurs when snails remain still for extended periods of time, even during their active phases. During this period, a live snail typically retracts into its shell when resting. Note that this state could at times be mistaken for death of the snail, but it is not. For us to know if the snail is merely resting, gently touch the snail's surface. 
you will notice that it will respond by slightly retracting inwards or even extending outwards. Also, we can energize our snails. Energizing our snails has to do with putting them in very cold and clean water to know if they are truly dead. Most time we do energizing of our snails when we transport snails from a very long distance, from one city to another. Maybe we are selling snails to a client. When we deliver those snails, as a recipient of those snails, you need to make sure you energize those snails by putting them in very cold and clean water. When you do this, it will reduce them from their stress and they will come out of their shell. You now know that these snails supplied to you are not dead snails, but they are very active snails. So now we have talked about how we can know if our snails are dead. Now let us talk about what to do if your snail is dead. Now you have discovered that this snail is dead. You have found out that it's not estivating. You have found out that this snail is not hibernating. You have found out that this snail is not even resting. And you have also tried to energize this snail and this snail is not coming up. What to do if your snail is not dead? If you have discovered that your snail is dead, here are four steps to quickly take. The first step is remove the dead snails. Carefully remove the dead snail or snails from its pen to prevent it from contaminating the other healthy snails and thus stop the spread of any disease associated with that snail or group of snails. Two, clean the habitat or pen. Thoroughly clean the snails and close pen to remove any bacteria or parasite that have might be associated with the dead snail. Change your water in the water deep if you have any. Then remove all the snails and clean up food remains. Give them calcium baths and retreat their soil to kill any existing bacteria and parasites including predators. Remember we talk about soil treatment before you introduce soil into your snail pen the soil needs to be properly treated also as we feed them with balanced rich diet with the basic nutrients including adequate calcium for their snails shell head we need to make sure that we do this to make sure that after we clean the habitat, we make sure that everything is well with them. Number three point, disposal. After those snails habitat have been thoroughly cleaned, they want to dispose of those dead snails. Carefully dispose of the dead snails respectfully. You can dig a hole and bury them around the farm area where it will decompose naturally. You can also dispose of the dead snails following your local regulation for animal disposal through government approved waste disposal agent in your locality. Number four point, monitoring. Always keep an eye on other snails in the pens for any signs of illness or inactivity you notice among the snails in each of the various pens you have. Early detection of inactivity of any snail in the respective pens will facilitate the quick response either by way of energizing a stressed snail or giving them calcium bath or even giving them quarantine for proper observation. Now let's talk about preventive measures for snail's health. We are not going to dwell much on that because we have extensively discussed that in our previous video entitled What to do to keep your snails alive and thriving. You can watch that very educative video too if you have not 
done so. You can see the link above. One, preventive measure for snail health. Proper habitat condition. Please try to maintain appropriate temperature, appropriate humidity and cleanness in the snail's environment like the pen or the greenhouse. Make sure the habitat condition is appropriate, is very conducive for them. Number two, adequate nutrition. Remember what we discussed in our previous video that we should be intentional about feeding our snails. As we feed them with balanced diets, a diet that is rich, that contains the basic nutrients, not just feeding them with one particular food every day, we we'll also want to try as much as possible to make sure we give them adequate calcium for their snails' shell health. The need for snails to have enough calcium cannot be underestimated in our, as it was discussed in our previous video. We showed you how to blend well washed, dried and finely blended eggshells from our poultry. So make sure that they have adequate supply of calcium to maintain their shells. Number three point, regular monitoring. We need to regularly check our snails either they are in stocked in separated snail pens or they are stuck in greenhouse for signs of stress, illness or unusual behavior in order for us to take necessary steps to salvage the situation or remedy the situation before it gets out of hand. Regular monitoring will also include making sure your snails in the different pens are devoid of cracks holes or crevices. Make sure that the snail pens are not filled with cracks, holes that we allow predators like soldier ants, reptiles, birds and other dangerous predators from gaining access which makes your snails vulnerable to attack. And for those of us using greenhouses, we also want to make sure that we properly monitor the greenhouse or its nearby surroundings from not having the build up of ant hills. Ant hills are also very dangerous to the greenhouse or the snail pen. So you should be very careful of its a ant hill that surrounds a snail pen or in the environment. So that is going to be all for this topic for now. We thank you for watching. For those of us that are interested in snail farming, you can watch this video. For those of us that are already subscribers to this channel, please keep watching Benga Nature Farms. For new subscribers, we thank you for joining Benga Nature Farms. Please keep watching Benga Nature Farms. Please, I want all of us to stay healthy as we're going to eat healthy foods that come from the farm. But before then, let us remember to hit the like button on this video. We want to subscribe to Benga Nature Farms. We want to share this video with our family, our loved ones, so that they too will be well informed before starting up their snail farm. And from here, I think it's bye for now. Bye-bye.